like he was caught with over 100 kilos of cocaine in his truck. Charges are pretty severe. He's just a truck driver. He's not a drug dealer. Dad! Everyone's been gawking at me since I crossed the 410. You're going to ruin a name in our community. Hi guys, welcome to Glam Jekyll. I am your host, Celine Silver, and today I have the pleasure of receiving Supender Raj. Hi Supender. Hi Celine. How are you? Good, good. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So Supender has a new series called The 410, and so I'm going to ask her a few questions about it. So you are the, the writer and also the main actress of mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering how, how did you enjoy the process? Um, right from the beginning of when I started writing it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the, the thing that was kind of fascinating for me to learn as an actor who was writing for myself, mm -hmm. knowing that I would play this character, um, is when I first showed the first couple of drafts mm -hmm. to our producers, um, and they looked at it and they said, you know, all of your characters are really clear, mm -hmm. except for Suri. And I think that that's because in my mind, I I almost put a, a block there when I, because I, you know how you can't see yourself clearly? Right. And with that character, because I was playing her, I think I had trouble putting her on the page and seeing her clearly. And it was, it was, you know, I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here, but I think it's important that as a, as a woman mm -hmm. writing for myself, I had people saying, she, she needs to be bigger. She needs to be louder. She needs to be more opinionated. She needs to... All these things that I am in real life. Yeah. But then putting it down on paper, you know, I feel like, especially coming from the South Asian community where growing up, women are taught to be submissive. Mm -hmm. They're taught to be quieter. They're taught to not voice their opinions, to not mm -hmm. have opinions. Um, that there was an aspect of of that, that was like almost like a weight on my shoulders that, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to, to, to move past. Mm -hmm. And I think for, for Suri, it was hard to write her big because even though I've been given other characters mm -hmm. that I've played that are that big, for me to write that character almost felt like, oh, well, then are people going to think that I'm this big, beautiful human being? In this show, so there is, there are a lot of South Asian people. Mm -hmm. So how was it to work with so many of them? It was, it was wonderful to be working with so many people from mm -hmm. my community. Yeah. Um, and because I wrote that script, I, I knew exactly, you know, even when I was writing it for the most part, um, I've been an actor in Canada and Toronto for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I knew who all the players were in terms of, you know, who all the other South Asian actors were. So even when I was writing it, I knew who I wanted to cast. Yeah. And then it was just getting those yeses. And as and I got very lucky that pretty much everyone that I wanted and I asked said yes. Mm -hmm. So then it was just like being on set with my friends, which honestly doesn't happen that often because often in, you know, um, I guess more mainstream shows, Di diversity hired like people who are there because not I mean like that's a, it's, a, it's a weird way of saying it but people you I tend to be the only a South Asian actor right. on set yeah. at times especially female like mm. you it's rare that you would see two South Asian females in a show so that scene there's a scene with Anjali who plays the lawyer mm -hmm. I really love that scene because like I think that in my entire acting career um, I've had very few scenes with other South Asian women, and I would like to see more of that. Yeah. So in the 410, so there is one of the characters who is gay, JJ. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if this is a taboo in the South Asian community. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I think that there's... I, I think there's an idea of masculinity mm -hmm. and men that exists in the South Asian community, especially because we're we're very patriarchal in that sense that um, that we still hang on to. Mm -hmm. And I think that JJ's character is very interesting, and it was very interesting to write because we did a um, a, a script reading where I had a, a friend of mine who was queer come in and mm -hmm. read the script before before Jade. Yeah. 
um, came in to play the part. And, you know, at that time, JJ hadn't really been fleshed out as a character. Mm -hmm. And one of the, um, one of the things that this individual said was that when he goes home Mm -hmm. to the suburb that he's from, he said in Toronto, he can be himself. Mm -hmm. He can wear whatever he wants. He can be as, as big as he wants to be. But when he goes home, he, he hates it. He hates going home. Because when he goes home, he's got to gotta be that other thing. So when JJ goes to visit Suri and bring her his clothes, he, he wears what he would wear mm-hmm. as sort of a symbol of pride. Like, this is who I am, and you can't take it away from me. Um, and is faced by all of that judgment, including Suri's grandmother. Mm-hmm. And I think that that was very important to put into the show because it very much is a bias that still exists in our society for sure, yeah. yeah and say in terms of like financing and you know finding studios to film at and tax incentives and all that stuff, like how is the Canadian market, the entertainment can- Canadian market? Um, it's it's it, it's it's very supportive, mm. I think for for new voices. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I think it's great for people starting out. Like for example, the 410 was made with a grant from Telefilm, which is the one of the funding bodies, yeah. and then we were able to to get it onto CBC. Mm-hmm. I think it's also it can be. Um, so for example, I have a friend who is a South Asian female, and she's writing a story mm-hmm. that is not centered around the South Asian community. Mm-hmm. It's just a, a story that she wants to tell that she finds fascinating. And I think that with the 410, I got very lucky that the story that I wanted to tell was centered around my community, mm-hmm. which is what I think the the focus when it comes to funding bodies is, is telling diverse stories. Mm-hmm. But if you're a filmmaker that wants to just tell a story, it might be a little bit difficult for you to get that funding. Yeah. So I think that while it is it is very supportive and I think it's wonderful and without them I wouldn't have had the opportunity to make this show, mm-hmm. um, I think that depending on the story that you're trying to tell, it could, it has the potential to be limiting based on the um, intentions of the, the funding agency. Mm-hmm. Today, you know, there are so many contents out there. Mm-hmm. So how... How can you stand out with your show? How how are you able to stand out with your show? I don't know. It's such a it's a, it's it's a it's a it's a difficult task right. because there's there's a lot of noise out there. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know what's interesting? And I don't know if it applies in this situation, but somebody um, I was in an acting class, mm-hmm. and maybe I was in an acting. I don't know where I heard this, but somebody said the truth has no signs like the truth has no signs pointing and sometimes an a- and what that means is as an actor you'll like if somebody says um like I put that over there and then you'll be like I put that over there and it's like well if you're telling the truth you don't need to point you just say I put right. that over there yes. because that's what you mean yes. so I think that like in a way I think that that is the way to 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 stand out. That like to not be concerned with the pointing and the making of the noise and the making of the signs, mm-hmm. but just telling the truth. Um, because then you'll find your audience. You'll find people who people are always in search of the truth. Mm-hmm. So if you if that's your focus and if that's your um, if that's how you want to tell a story, like I was watching Marriage Story last night. And the thing that resonated with me about those performances and about that storytelling was it wasn't it wasn't fancy, it mm-hmm. wasn't big, it was like it was kind of directed how you might even see like a stage play, um, but it was truthful. Yeah, and it's nominated for an Oscar. Exactly. So I think that I think that that's how you do it. So is there anything else that you want to add? Yeah, I think that the, so this is my first show, and I think that the um, the most interesting thing that I learned about creating the 410 mm-hmm. as, a, as, as an artist, as, as, a, as a person who had never written anything before, mm-hmm. um, was, you know, I, I've, I've had a lot of interviews, I've, we've released the show, people have watched it, and then, so in, you know, when you're at home by yourself and it's quiet and you start to like, okay, 
did it work? Did it not work? And you turn the wheels of like what you did. Well, one day I just had this like very small, very quiet, but like fascinating, fascinating realization that if I hadn't sat down to write this thing, Mm -hmm. it wouldn't exist. All of this stuff that has happened since with people watching the show and understanding my story, and I think that even before writing it was also just having the belief in myself Mm -hmm. that I I could write it. Um, It, it, it's done so much for me, for my self-esteem, for who I am as a person, for how I carry myself, because, you know, previously as an actor, you need other people. Right. You need other people to hire you to in order to facilitate the telling of the story. Yeah. And here I am, mm-hmm. here I was, this yeah. person who hadn't done anything. And really, all all I did need to create it was just the belief that I could. Mm-hmm. And then everything else followed. So in terms of creating the next series or in the next world, I have an example now that I've set for myself. But nobody can give that to you. And I think that that is really important for for young filmmakers, for young content creators that, like, are looking at other people to give them the answers that really you know what you have the capacity to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that the the follow-through is really important Mm -hmm. on those things. If something's up, just tell me so I can help you. I can't do anything if you're hiding shit. 